we are a group of engineers and farmers and we came together in 2007 at the world's first biochar conference. I got, I got interested in biochar as a way of sequestering large amounts of CO2 in a useful way in the soil and my co-founder Ian Stanley is a third generation wheat farmer who was interested in how, would I, how do I dispose of all this waste biomass that I'm creating on my farm where my father and I planted all these rows of trees back in the farm to overcome the salinity that had started to appear in the last couple of generations. And so we came together to, to basically help create, help, help create a technology that would help that salinity problem as well as sequestering a lot of CO2. And that was 12 years ago. It took us 10 years to develop a technology. We, look, we looked around the world to see if we could find technologies that would create energy and biochar in a way that didn't need ongoing government support. My background, I'm a mining engineer I, and I run dirty, dangerous processes that blow up. And so I, so I went and looked at all these processes to see which ones would be economic without ongoing government subsidy and which would be safe and that people would be proud to have them in their communities. And we found none that could do those things. And, and even today, I think that's quite difficult to find. Um, technologies that are clean and safe and economic without government subsidy, without on ongoing government subsidy. To produce biochar at an affordable cost and to produce energy at an affordable cost. So we made the decision several years ago to develop our own technology. We didn't set out to do that, but that's what we ended up doing. It took us several years to develop that technology. So there's one commercial demonstration plant operating outside Mount Gambier in South Australia, which, which people can book and come and see. It makes about a megawatt of syngas, which currently we burn in a boiler, in a hot water boiler, to make hot water for the glass house. It also makes about a quarter of a tonne an hour of biochar, which is used to pay for the wood basically. So the company, that, the recycling company that supplies the wood in moving floor trailers, take away the biochar as payment for that service. So essentially the glass house is getting their energy for free. It uses about three quarters of a tonne an hour of wood, makes a quarter of a tonne an hour of biochar and one megawatt of heat. In, in doing so, the overall process is very carbon negative because the syngas displaces fossil fuel that would have been used previously and the biochar locks up atmospheric carbon dioxide that was in the, in the biomass. So the overall process is carbon negative by about three quarters of a tonne an hour of CO2 equivalent. So we think that's quite a nice um, mass and energy balance and an environmental balance and it doesn't require government subsidy. We did this because we believe this sort of technology can start to decentralise energy production so that the biomass can be local biomass that is used to make local energy and biochar that goes back into local soils or goes into local animal feed or local concrete or local bricks or local roads. So it's a way of maybe going back to an older way of our civilization operating. We're quite excited by that idea.